Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Who's happy to be at church today this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Come on, let's stand up. Hallelujah. And let's start to worship God. You know, there's a scripture in Psalms 100. Psalms 100 shows uh, a man who is grateful for things in their lives. Who's grateful for things in your lives? Sometimes we focus on the things we don't have, but what if we start focusing on the things that you do have? Many people can't have kids, and you have beautiful kids, amen? It's okay for them to be screaming and yelling and crying because there's so many people out there who can't even have kids, and God gave you a beautiful child, amen? And so let's be thankful for what God has given us. And how do we do that? We express it with our hands. We express it with a shout. We express it, hallelujah, by worshiping him. And the psalmist says in Psalms 100, let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord, check this out, with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And that's what we're about to do. We're about to worship God. Amen. It's to acknowledge the Lord is God. Do you acknowledge him as God? He made us and we are his. You belong to him, his people and the sheep of his pastures. Now watch this in verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generation. Amen. Do you believe that with me? And if you do, hallelujah, can you help me worship God this morning and give him a shout? Hallelujah. If you're grateful for who God is. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for what you're about to do in this place, Lord Jesus. Help us, Father God. Remind us of all the things you've done in our lives, Lord, and the things you'll continue doing that, doing for us, Lord. And just because of that, Lord, we're going to praise you and worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. And Psalms 150 ends with, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. So we are here to praise and worship our King this morning. Amen. So sing with that this morning. Sing with me this morning. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We give you praise this morning. The Bible says it.
name. The word says if we don't worship, right, the rocks will cry out. I don't need no rock crying out in my place. I will give him worship this morning. I will give him all the praise. He is worthy. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord Jesus. We declare your goodness, my God. Your mercy endures forever, Lord Jesus. You are worthy.
together, congregation. Amen. Declare that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. church come on church give them a shout give them a praise hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated praise the lord hallelujah for those who don't know me it looks like everyone in the house knows me but maybe someone online who's watching currently my name is pastor allen and i'm the lead pastor of metro church welcome to metro church if this is your first time here uh, please go ahead and fill out a digital connect card. Right there, there is a link, and it says we want to connect with you. We just want to follow up with you and get a chance to know who you are. Amen. Currently, we are under uh, doing a 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Who has joined us with these 21 days of prayer and fasting? Can I just give you a praise report? Is that okay? And, and I'm believing next week we're going to get another praise report. And then the last week of Sunday, we're going to allow you to come here and share a praise report. So my wife and I, in 2023, we received a notification that our homeowner insurance insurance went up to $500 extra a month. And the reason for that is because our house is older than 17 years. And a lot of insurance company in Florida don't want to cover uh, these houses that are older than 17 years old. By the way, there's nothing wrong with my roof. We even got an inspector to go up there and he said, there's nothing wrong wrong with your roof and I can I just be honest with you uh, uh, your pastor was struggling to come up with those $500 extra every month but God made a way he was able to always provide those 500 but but it was hard it was hard amen and one of my prayers Wendelin was God can you help me by either providing those extra funds where it's not becoming too hard for me to get it or can you remove those $500 by me and my wife shopping around and finding a company that will say, yes, we will cover you. And by the way, in 2023, we tried to find companies and everyone kept saying, no, no, no. Well, the praise report is that we kept finding a company. They told us yes, amen. And in the month of January, I was struggling to pay my insurance my um my mortgage with the insurance and I was praying in the parking lot of Walmart and I said God I don't have these five hundred dollars to pay my mortgage payment you know we just came out of the holidays and there's a lot of expenses when you come out of these holidays and my wife texted me at that same moment when I was choked up talking to God and she said the mortgage company just lower our mortgage payment by $480. Come on, somebody. Amen. For me, that means a lot because at the moment I was, I was choked up. I was like kind of sentimental and speaking to God and saying, God, I don't have it, but I know you're able. And my wife texted me out of nowhere and showed me a screenshot and said, this is our new mortgage payment every month. Come on, somebody. And it's the same amount that I had to make the payment. So moving forward, hallelujah, God is going to continue to bless not only me, right? That's, that's the finance. Can, can I be honest with you? There's some things in my life mentally that I want God to help me. There's some things in my health that I want God to help me, amen? And I'm 
believing that if God can do it through me, God can do it through you as well. God doesn't have grandkids. All of us are his kids. In Spanish, they say, Dios no tiene nene lindo. Dios no tiene, uh, right, uh, uh, grandkids. But God, a favorite kid, we're all his kids. And he loves every single one of us. Just So I'm going to encourage you. Go into our website, find a way to start your 21, uh, it's not 21 anymore, right? It'll be, four, it'll be 14 days if you start tomorrow. That can be through soul fasting, right? Stay away from social media. Some of us be on social media posting every two minutes, three minutes. There needs to be some boundary. There needs to be some health going on there, right? Uh, some of us be on YouTube. Uh, come on, somebody, amen, a lot on YouTube while I'm driving. That's what keeps me busy. But what I'm trying to say is you got to find a way to replace that time that you're on social media and replace and get closer to God. Amen. Um, th the next thing I want to talk to you about is a couple of things is we're going to have a leadership cohort. Um, and this leadership cohort is a three weeks uh, class that we have where we're going to be at the New York Library. I think there's another slide there, brother, that I put. Uh, did I say New York? Oh, my God. Argyle. <laughs> Our, I, make, I, I got excited. Maybe we got to go to New York. Um, Argyle Elementary uh, Library. Okay. There's no elementary. Argyle Library. Every Monday, we're going to be there for three weeks, and we're going to be teaching about leadership. You know, Jesus himself uh, had 12 disciples, and what he did was he helped, he helped to develop these leaders. So I'm going to encourage you at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., for the year 2024, join us every Monday for three weeks, January 29th. That's when it starts. And then the last week, we're going to anoint you. We're going to sing you. We're going to say, you guys are going to be a blessing into the lives of many in 2024. And we're going to be looking at the book of Nehemiah. Is that okay? The book of Nehemiah, how to rebuild stuff. Amen. To do the work of the Lord. Amen. The other thing I want to talk about is the five love language. We're going to have a marriage conference coming up. You may say, well, pastor, I'm not married. It's okay. Because if one day you dis decide to get married, this is a great conference. My wife and I, we went to this before. It's an amazing conference. We had a hold of this book back in 2007. It helped me and my wife to identify our love language. If you, we know some of you might have kids, but you got enough time to plan and find someone to take care of your kids. And if you don't have anyone to take care of your kids from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., I'm going to advise you to reach out to my wife because we got three beautiful daughters who usually, that's what they do. They take care, and the church they go to, the majority of all the parents, guess who they call? They call my, my, oldest, my, my oldest daughter, 23, and my other daughter, uh, Amber, I mean, Alyssa. I get confused with these girls. Then we got a young one, Gabby, and she also has helped out, amen, in, in the past. So it shouldn't be no excuse. Invest in your marriage. Just, as, just like you invest in stocks, you invest in different things. Invest in your marriage, and you'll see how God's going to start blessing you uh, in your life. And like I said, maybe you're not married, but I would advise you uh, to, to, to go to this because I believe marriage is it $55 per couple and then $59 a couple, and then 30 39 for single, and then $12 for the lunch, which is Chick-fil-A or Zaxby, amen? I, we've been to it. It's at Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, amazing place there. I look up to a lot to that pastor there, H.B. Charles Jr., great pastor, uh, great phenomenal preacher, expositor of the word of God, and um, yep, so we'll, we'll have, we'll, we're going to try our best to take a group to this particular marriage conference. I'm going to ask my wife to come up one more time with Wendelin and sing one more song, and I'm excited to bring the second week of the book called Pray First. If you haven't purchased the book, I'm going to encourage you. Don't just jump chapters and go to one chapter that looks good. Jump. Read all the chapters. Amen. Yes, Praise the Lord. Amen. And let me tell you, marriage, um, if I, I have journals, right, who's who inspired me and got me into journaling. I've kept my journals, my books, right? I have journals from 2007 and 2008 that if I were to read them, I, I just start to cry because I see the difference from 2007 
for 2023 and 2024 where God has taken our marriage, where there was nothing but sorrow and there was a lot of grieving and he doesn't get me. Amen. He doesn't get me. He doesn't understand me. He doesn't get me this and this and this. And then I'm like, wow, in 2024, he gets it. I get it. And there are things that we've learned like through the five love languages that we can say, man, we get each other now. It takes time. It takes practice and it takes you investing in your marriage. All right, so I'm going to definitely encourage you guys to do this. And if you don't, if you're not married and maybe you're, you're a single mom with kids, take, take the class, right? Do the class. Read the book. You know why? Because you can learn the five lung languages and how you can take that to your kids as they grow up. And you get to learn what, 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 sh what how can I show my kids love? And maybe you can teach your kids. I need you to understand how I, I receive love and how I, 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 I navigate in my life. So I encourage you guys to invest in that. Amen. I will not talk no more about that, but it's, it's, a, good, it's a good conference. You're not going to miss out on that. You're going to miss out if you don't go. Amen. Let's worship one more time with Holy Forever this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask you guys to get up one more time and just worship God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was telling them this morning, this, I get choked up with this song because I just imagine myself worshiping the Lord, just worshiping and crying at his feet. Amen? All of us. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land. Your name, your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones, all thrones and dominions, all power and possessions. Your name stands above
praise the Lamb of God. He is holy. He is a holy God and worthy of all praise and all worship this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask uh, the, the to, to, I can't even speak after that. <laughs> the children's ministry is dismissed. Amen. I'm going to ask that the children go with the Hobgoods right now and and get their word on, get their, get the, receive a word also this morning as they're also talking on prayer and fasting. So I'm going to ask uh, that the kids be dismissed, amen, and as we get into the next phase of our, of our worship, amen, we're going to hear a word. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Currently, we are under a new series called Pray First, the transformation power of a life built on prayer. You know, everyone who prays, um, there is something about prayer. It brings joy back into your life when you spend some time with God. It takes you, a, it takes you through a journey through through your prayer of the Bible, which kind of leaps and reveals uh, uh, personal things and personal stuff that you're going through, personal, that when you start reading the word and praying, a shift happen. Something happens in your personal life. One of the things that we want to do is we want to give everyone some tools how to pray, how to fast, how to be grounded in the word of God through making prayer a priority. You know, prayer for me and my wife, we've been waking up every day at five in the morning. I'm, I'll be lying if I say I didn't wake up at six one of those days where I was like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And But, but we still take the time to have a prayer focus. If you don't know this, we have a prayer focus every day for a specific topic. So currently we have a topic speaking about um Children and grandchildren. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, oh Lord, my what was it, Marion? The no, it wasn't children. It was uh, parents and grandparents. Yep, Colossians chapter three. So we we've been praying for every parent. We've been praying for every grandparents. How many grandparents we have in the house? Two, three. Amen. What one hand, praise the Lord. Everybody's focused right now with the paper. Miss Gloria is walking around, uh, giving out these paper, and there should be a pen right in front of you. Take notes, because I want you guys to learn about the word of God. Let me bring my slide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray and ask God to take full control of his word this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to teach and preach your word. Lord, take full control of my mind, everything we study this week, Father God, through this book. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will use me for your glory and honor and that every person that's in this room or watching online will be, Father God, edified, will be encouraged, will be lifted up today, Father God, whatever they're going through. You know how everyone came in these doors, Lord. I pray that everyone leave this place not the same way they came in, Father God. I pray that they will leave this place inspired, encouraged, Father God, filled with your presence, Lord Jesus. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So a lot of the teaching that I'm using right now is currently through a book called Pray First. Listen, the book is 11 bucks, maybe 12. My sister Gloria just purchased the book yesterday and should arrive uh, today at her, at her house. We still have 14 more days where you can read the entire book. Reading is healthy. Do you know that? Listen, there are three books that I'm reading right now in the month of January. 
Number one, I'm reading the Bible. That's the number one, number one book we should be reading, either through your phone, through your tablet, or a hard copy. The second book I'm reading is Pray First, because through Pray First, I'm using the teachings here to teach you the word of God through prayer and fasting. And the third book I'm teaching right now, it's about having success. A lot of people define success in ministry a little bit different, how the Bible teaches us what success really means. So I'm going to encourage you, pick up a book, especially the Bible, for the beginning of the year, and let God be the one to speak to us through his word. Amen? You know, the Bible talks a lot about having a regular conversation with God. How many of you know that God wants us to have a conversation with him? And in the scriptures, to be honest with you, there are some scriptures that show us uh, uh, excluding uh, the book of Psalms or, 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 or another book that speaks about how to pray. A lot of these books like Psalms tells us how to sing, how to worship, but there are not a lot, of, a lot of books in the Bible that speaks about prayer, even though the topic prayer is very important. And so today I want to teach you a symbolic historical element that points to prayer. And the model that I'm about to show you, we can use it. I remember Benny Hinn. Who remember Benny Hinn? Benny Hinn at one time uh, taught this. I remember this back in 95, 96. And when I picked up the book, I, I, rem, I was remembered, reminded by Benny Hinn. Why? Because when he taught it, honest, honestly, I loved it. I, I really enjoy spending time with God through the model of what I'm about to show you, which is prayer. Now, prayer, I know you might say for those scholars or those watching online, in the New Testament, Jesus gave us a way how to pray, right? The Lord's Prayer. It's an outline. It's a model how to pray. But there are also some other models in the scriptures that we can take, like the prayer of Moses, which we're going to teach today, the prayer of Jabez, the prayer. There are different type of models and outlines that we can learn how to pray through these models. Amen. The, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, pray in the spirit in every situation. Now watch this. Use every kind of prayer and request there is. So there's no one specific way of praying. There are different ways of we can pray. Now I want to teach you something today where I don't want you to say what pastor is teaching is not biblical. It's a principle not a law. What I'm about to teach you right now is a principle. Anybody understand the word principle, right? It's a principle, not a law. I want to make sure no one starts saying that pastor's teaching something weird here at Metro Church. You may recall uh, the story of Moses. The leader God chose to bring the Hebrews, people out of slavery in Egypt. They were going to the promised land. Who remember that? which became the geographical nation of Israel. Once settled there, they were instructed to build a temple, which will be the permanent dwelling place of God among them. But the only problem was the people of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years before entering the promised land. And so what they did was they did something called a portable tabernacle. Now, I was just thinking the other day, I, I hear the word portable, right? And we're portable, right? And we, we set up and we tear down. Can you imagine setting up for 40 years in the desert a portable tabernacle? And that's what they did. They set it up, they tear it down. They set it up and they tear it down. The portable version was called a tabernacle and comprised of a rectangular tent. It was a tent with six pieces of furniture. And it was built to a specific thing that God wanted. 
In Exodus chapter 25, it says, have the people of Israel build me a what? A holy sanctuary so I can what? So I can live among them. How many knows that God wants to live among you? How many know that God wants to be in your life? Hallelujah. And the way we do that, in order for us to experience the presence of God in our life, is through prayer. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishing exactly according to the pattern. Listen to that word pattern. I love that word because in life, sometimes we have to follow patterns. Patterns are important because it shows us a step one, a step two, a step three. And for me, I'm a very analytical person. I love to do things by steps. Give me some practical ways how I can get closer to God. Give me some practical ways that I can read the Bible, some practical ways that I can pray. And today I pray that as we teach the prayer of Moses and the prayer of the tabernacle, you personally will start praying the same way. Amen. These instructions were included with a protocol before entering the presence of God. Moses will follow specific instructions to communicate with him, but he would enjoy an intimate conversation. I don't know about you. Have you ever spoken to someone and you're speaking and that conversation is a healthy conversation? Like it's very pleasant. You enjoy it. Have you ever experienced that with God? Have you ever experienced having an intimate, sweet aroma, just talking and sensing the prayer? Can you imagine Moses, hallelujah, when he was there, he will experience that beautiful moment. But the Bible says that inside the tent of meeting, the Lord will speak to Moses. How many of us really want God to speak to us? If we really want God to speak to us, we need to learn to pray. We need to learn to have a pattern. We need to learn how to have a model, a way of praying to God. The Bible says that he will speak to face to face as one speaks to a friend. God is your friend, my friend. God loves you. God wants to have an intimate relationship talking with him. Hallelujah. Can you imagine how incredible it must have been to directly experience the presence of the living God? I want to encourage someone who's watching online or who's in here this morning that God wants you to experience that as well. And we're going to experience it when we learn how to be intimate with God through prayer. One of the first things that do you see in this particular outer court was the outer court with, where, people, where Moses would give God thanks. With Moses would give God thanks. So on the outer part, Moses learned to do thanksgiving and praise. This is where Moses would have stepped into the outer court. Here he would give God thanks. A tradition the psalmist later in the book of Psalms, which I read this morning, right? It says, Psalms 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his courts with what? With praise. So when you start praying, the first thing we need to learn to do is say thank you. When, you. when you separate the time of prayer, the first thing you say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You might say, well, I don't have that many things to give thanks to God. Well, why don't you get a journal, like my wife says, we journal. Write it down and say thank you for giving me breath this morning. God, thank you for waking me up. God, thank you for my kids. God, thank you for the home. God, thank you for this bed. God, thank you. You just start thanking him. But the problem sometimes is that some of us go to God with a 
grocery list and we start saying, God, I need this. God, I need, can you, God doesn't want you to just come in and just rush and talk to him. God wants you to have a quiet, intimate time that when you start the first step, right? I'm going to show you six steps. The first steps is give him praise and give him thanks. Gratitude is one of the most powerful ways to keep our emotion balanced and healthy. There are a lot of people who are not mentally um, healthy because they only put their focus on the things that they don't have. But statistics and study shows that once, once you realize and you have that gratitude, your emotions are balanced. Your, your health is balanced. Why? Because you are a gratitude person. You know to thank for the things that you do have and don't focus on the things that you don't have. So giving thanks in the outer court adjusts our attitude. Adjusts our hearts and set the tone for the next step that I'm about to show you, which is drawing closer toward the brazen altar. The brazen altar in the Old Testament, everyone had regularly to bring an animal as a sacrifice to the tabernacle. It was a symbol of payment for your sins. Today, we don't have to bring an animal. Today, we don't have to bring something for our sins. Why? Because Jesus paid everything for our sins once and for all. His blood, come on somebody, on the cross is the ultimate sacrifice that you don't have to think about an animal anymore. So once you thank him, you give him praise, now you're entering to the brazen altar. What do you start doing? What do you start doing? You start focusing on the cross. And what do you do when you focus on the cross? Look what Psalms 100, 3, 2, 5 says. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. How many of you know sometimes you have to encourage your soul and tell your soul, hey, soul of mine, you know what? Don't forget the benefits. Who, who forgives all your sins and heal all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love, come on somebody, and compassion, who satisfy your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So this is the part where you, th you start thanking God for the gift he gave us. And what's his name? Jesus, come on somebody, I hope you're not falling asleep on me this morning. Help me out, I wish somebody would say amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you Jesus for his sacrifice and his love. Let the power of the cross and what it means settle right now in your spirit, okay? In addition to expressing your gratitude in the outer core, let's claim the power of the transformation and the healing of, that, of the cross that Jesus gave his life for every single one of us. So what does it look like in the second part of our prayer? It looks like this. God, thank you for the cross. God, thank you for the benefits of the cross. Thank you for my salvation, God. So now you're praying, you're saying this. Thank you, God, for the cross. Thank you for salvation because you, because you forgave me for all my sins. Thank you, God, for healing me because the Bible says that God heals all my diseases. God, thank you for redemption. Could God rescue me and restores me? God, thank you for transformation because God changes me into his likeness. God, thank you for your blessings because you provide everything that I need. So first you start with thanksgiving. Second, you start focusing on the cross. You start thanking God for what he did. Thank you, God, for dying for my sins. Thank you because you can heal me right now through the situation that I'm going through. The third thing is now is the laver. The laver was the place where people would cleanse themselves, where people would prepare themselves before entering 
the tabernacle. It was a bowl. It was a place where there was water, where people would wash themselves before, before proceeding any closer to the holiness of God. For us today, this represents to check our hearts. Check your motives. This is where you ask God, God, is there something in my heart that doesn't align with your word? God, are my motives aligning with your scriptures? What are you doing? You're allowing God to cleanse you. You're allowing God to expose anything that's in your heart. Is there unforgiveness? Is there some, some bitterness? Is there resentment? This is where you tell, and we're talking about prayer, right? You're having intimacy with God. Out of court, praise and thanksgiving. Second, you focus on the cross because he died for our sins. And third, now you're allowing him to cleanse you. Because the only one who can cleanse us, his name is Jesus. Look what Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, mercy, to offer your what? Your bodies a, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now listen to what David said. David kind of said the same thing. Look what he says. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Come on, somebody. Have you ever been anxious before? Worry about something, about your kids, about your finance? This is where you tell God. You tell God, cleanse me because I'm worried. Search my heart. It says, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any what? Offensive way in me and lead me in the in the way of everlasting. This is where you're expressing to God to cleanse you. We don't have to go anymore to that lavish and wash ourselves. Why? Because the one who washes us, his name is Jesus. And let me show you what that looks like. It's called confession. We confess our sins. Did you know that we sin every day? Unconsciously. And sometimes we don't even know. And when we allow God in this third step to getting closer to him and say, God, is there something in me? And if there is, God, forgive me. Forgive me and give me a fresh start. What are you doing? You're humbling yourself. You're being sincere. You want to turn away from sins and allow God to renew you. Then you surrender your attitude, your heart, and your mind. And for me, I'm not going to lie to you. When I saw this, it was an eye-opener, Marianne, because I've been practicing it this whole week. And in this part of the prayer, this is where it directs me to uh, Romans 12, 1, that it tells us directs uh, um, that our body is a living sacrifice. When you think about body, you got to think about your eyes, your mouth, your hands. And this is what I do, right? This is what, what, how I pray to God. I say, God, my eyes, can I look at stuff that pleases you? Lord, if there, if there is something that I'm seeing that doesn't go with your can you please help me to look at maybe people who are in need? People who are going through something. God, can you help me to listen to stuff that is good? Am I, am I listening to music that doesn't align with you? Am I listening to gossip that I'm not supposed to listen? Does that make sense? My eyes, my, my ears, my mind. Lord, am I thinking stuff that, that's right and pleasing to you? And if it's not, let my mind be pleasing and thinking of you. Lord, that the words that come out of my mouth, everything that I speak, 
will be will be holy to you. That everything that my hands do will be holy. So my eyes, my ears, my mind, I present it to God early in the morning and say, God, allow that anything that I see, that I listen, anything that I touch, anything that I speak will be pleasant and holy to you. You, you know what you're doing? You're, you're confessing to God. You're, you're asking God to help you with our sins because we're all sinners. Some of us start gossiping. Some of us start watching stuff we're not supposed to watch. So what you're asking him early in the morning when you first start praising him and giving him thanks and you look at the cross and now you're allowing him to cleanse you and asking him, God, would you allow my day to be pleasing and good? So you can you help me? Because the only one who can help us, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. You're telling him, I want to turn away from my sins and I want to turn towards you. I want to offer my body as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. The fourth thing is the candlestick. It invites the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. And in your life, hallelujah. This next piece of the tabernacle was a seven-branch golden candlestick. The fire presents the Holy Spirit. And how we are called to be the light in the world of darkness. Look at what the Bible says in James, I'm sorry, Isaiah eleven twelve. 12. Is that it? Isaiah 11, 2, sorry. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge. Did you know that there's a spirit to fear the Lord? So this tells me that God can give us a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, counsel, might, and knowledge and fear of the Lord. When Jesus left the earth, Christians were given the power of the Holy Spirit. God calls the Holy Spirit advocate. That's what the word is, advocate. He's there to advocate for us. We cannot do what he has called us to do without a supernatural power. We need a supernatural power to be able to do the things that God has called us to do. So this is when you start asking God, hallelujah, you start asking God, hallelujah, for the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When you start looking at the scriptures that it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Is love, is joy, is peace. Some of us be walking around with no peace. Some of us be walking around with no joy. Well, I want to remind you today that you don't have to continue living that lifestyle because God promised us that if we call out on the name of God, he will send us and fill us up with his holy presence. So the fourth step is to ask God during your prayer, God, can you help me today with joy? Because I'm struggling with this joy today. God, you promised us that you can give me love. God, you promised me that you can give me joy. God, you show me that, that you can give me patience, kindness, godly goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Hallelujah. Second of Timothy says 1 verse 6 and 7. This is why I remind you, Metro Church, to fan the flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I lay hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of what? See, this spirit of fear is not the same spirit of fear of the Lord. It's two different things. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit fear of the Lord is to help us not to sin. This one here is a spirit that oppresses you. 
that doesn't allow you to move forward, to be a champion, to be, hallelujah, someone who was washed with the blood of Jesus and understand that God did not leave us alone. He left a comforter, the Holy Spirit. So this fourth step reminds us that we have the Holy Spirit. So what does it look like when you're praying in the morning? God, give me your gift of the fruit of spirit. God, give me the gifts to prophesy. God, give me the gift to interpret prophecy. God, give me the gift of healing. These are two different gifts. The gifts of the fruit of the spirit and the gift to serve others. So when you pray in the morning, you ask God, can you give me that fire? Can you fill me up? This fifth step now that we're going to talk about is called the table of showbread. The table of showbread. Read God's word. This is where the word comes in. And let God speak to me. The word of God symbolized bread. And this is the, in the next part in the tabernacle, a, ta a table with 12 loaves, hallelujah, of bread. These represented the importance of reading God's word. You don't read God's word only on Sunday, guys. You read God's word every day. And you ask God, God, please help me to be consistent. One of the worst things, I'll be honest with you, that I fear and I ask God to help me, is to be an inconsistent person. That's the worst. Someone who's inconsistent. There's no consistency. One day they'll do it, one, one, one day they don't. One day they do it. And so I ask, because I'm, I'm human. We're all human, right? We, 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 it's okay to ask God, Lord, for 2024, help me to be consistent. Help me not to be inconsistent. Inconsistency doesn't look good because a person who says something, their words is no longer valid. Every time they speak, you don't believe it because they're what? Inconsistent. Matthew, um, Matthew 4, 4 says, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not what? Shall not live on bread alone but on words that come from the mouth of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the what? Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the who? The devil's schemes. Take the sword. This is where, that's the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit, which is what? Which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. Hallelujah. Joshua, in chapter 1, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 8. You don't, I don't have it there, but read that scripture. John Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, God tells him, be strong and what? And courageous. Do not what? Depart from the law. Meditate on this word day and what? And night. This is the problem with many of us, guys. We are not meditating in the word of God morning and night. Why? Why did God tell Moses, uh, Joshua, be strong, be courageous, because he knew that the enemy was going to attack them if they didn't learn to meditate on the promises of God. Hallelujah. So we need to, how, how does this look when we're praying? Pull out your Bible. Download the, the app. Uh, it's called, um, thank you, brother, this book of instruction. It says, must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and you will succeed in whatever you do. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. So what does this look like? You take time to read and think about the word of God in the morning. 
Remember, we're talking about a model. Step one, Pastor, what I got to do this every day? Listen, when you do this, I promise you, it's going to feel so awesome because your time, you won't even feel it. You won't even feel it. My time when I do this, it takes about 30 to 35 minutes <clears throat> in, the, in the time that I've done it. When you do it, you're claiming God's promises. You're saying, God, your word says that you are going to save my family. Lord, your word says that you can bring healing. Does that make sense? You start claiming the promises of God. Then you start asking God to reveal something fresh. God, reveal something fresh of revelation of your word. You start asking him for a word to help you. Can you give me a word today that will help me throughout the day? How many of us deal with people? Hallelujah. And when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with different personalities, different characters. And some of us, if we're not prepared mentally, we're going to get frustrated and we're going to get angry. Have you ever met someone who works in customer service and you sense they're stressed out, they're just not pleasant? If many of us were to tap into the presence of God, they can say there's something different about this person. There's something beautiful about this person. They're not even angry. What, why don't you get angry even knowing because God is in control? I, I, know, I know the God I serve. I know the, the man from above. But it's going to take a word that's going to help you. And then you ask him to show you how to apply his word in your life around you, around the world you live in. You say, thank you, God, for giving me your word. I commit to reading it this morning, and I ask you to reveal yourself me through it, and I want to do more for you. The sixth step is the altar of incense. This is where you worship him by his name. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. You just start worshiping him. Oh, you are God, Nisi. You are my peace. God, you are a strong tower. Lord, you are my Jehovah Jireh because you are my provider. God, you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord, because you are my healer. What a beautiful name it is. It's there's just joy. You just start thinking about all the great things. This is the altar where the incense, hallelujah, it was an entrance of holy of holy where God's presence dwell. As the people of God enter his presence, they worship his name. This altar represents worship of adoration. What we did in the first song, that's what's called adoration. You know, there's some, I'm sorry, the second song. There's some songs that are aggressive. You have to shout. You have to jump, right? You have to, come on, come on, guys, come on. But there are some songs that you just, Ah, oh, you just adore. You're in awe moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just, this is the moment where you just, you're in awe because you know who the God, who is the God that you serve. Look what the Bible says, hallelujah. In Proverbs 18.10 says, look what the Bible says in Proverbs 18.10 says, the name of the Lord is what? Is a strong tower. The righteous, what they do, they run to it. Why? Because they're safe. Lord, you are Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you are my pastor. I shall not want anything. You supply all of my needs. You just start recognizing his name. This is where you worship him. And if you need a list of names in the Bible, I promise you, you can Google it and put names of Jesus or name of Jehovah and a whole bunch of them will start pulling up and it will tell you the original, the, the, uh, the Aramaic or the Hebrew and it will give you an, an explanation of who he is, hallelujah. 
thank you, God, for your presence. This is where you start thanking him. I know that you are with me. I worship you and worship you alone. I know you, God, that you are Jehovah Rapha. I just said that. Jehovah Shammah in my present help. This is a moment of just worship when you're praying. And then you have the last one, the Ark of Covenant. This is where you start interceding for others. This is the final place. This is the ending of your prayer. This is the holy of holy where God's presence dwell. There the priests will intercede, praying on behalf of the people of God. In the same way, God has called us to intercede on behalf of those around us. Look what the Bible says in 1 of Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse 1 through 2. I urge, you then, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving will be made for what? For all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live what? Peaceful and quiet lives and all godliness and holiness. Hallelujah. This is where you start praying, hallelujah, for those who are lost. How many of us have lost families? When we say lost, we mean they don't have a relationship with Jesus. Many of us have loved ones, right? This is where you start praying. You start mentioning the names of those lost people. This is where you start praying for those who are in authority. You start praying for your, the president of the United States, even though you didn't vote for him and you're not too crazy for the president who's currently in, is, in, is as, as a president, right? You still have a responsibility to pray for your president. You know, 2024, I'm just giving you a heads up. It's going to be a tough year. You know why? Because there's elections. And every time there's an election, there's always division. There's always that animosity. And everyone has an opinion. But I'm going to encourage you guys to vote, yes, right? But don't get into politics. That's not what God has called us to do. God never called us. God called us to continue to pray for the lost. God called us to bring hope to those who don't have hope. And so I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage my, myself as well because 2024, I'm, I'm giving you a heads up. We're going to be seeing the news. And as we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff that we don't like. And justice will always prevail. I want to remind someone here today that justice always prevail. And did you know that you have to pray for people who are experiencing hardship, those who probably lost a loved one, who lost, who lost their mom, their husband, and even a pet? By the way, my wife probably doesn't want to talk about it, but we just lost our 14-year-old dog that we had. We had to put him to sleep on Friday. It was a tough decision, especially for my wife, because that dog, Love my wife. Poor Lindo. Lindo was suffering. He was going through so much pain. And so we didn't want him to continue going through that pain anymore. So I'm going to encourage you. Can you pray for the Diaz family? Because we're mourning for the loss of our dogs. So why don't you pray for your pastor? This is the part when you pray for your pastor. My pastor doesn't know it all. He does mistakes. But can you bless him? Can you bless him financially? Can you bless him in his quiet time with the Lord? Can you anoint him? Can you guide him? This is where you start praying for leadership, the group leaders, members in the church. You start praying for missionaries. You start praying for relationship, your friends, your co-workers, your acquaintance. You start even praying for your enemies. Come on, somebody. You pray for your enemies, for your, advers your adversaries. And the way you look, the way I look at adversaries is those who always disagree with you. Those are enemies. And everything you do, they just disagree with it. Nope, that's not the way it's done. Nope, that's not. And so the way you got to look at Lord, bless them. So th during this 20, 21 days of prayer, I'm going to encourage everyone to find a time to pray, do the tabernacle prayer. That moment when I was uh, praying, I was praying driving using this method. 
and I was praying for others. I was at, I was at the ending of my prayer that Wednesday when, when I started saying, God, I just prayed for everyone. I said, but now, Lord, now I pray for me, God. Now you, now you start praying for your stuff. After you did the seven steps, now you start bringing your petitions. You see, many of us, we don't do that. Many of us, what we start doing is we start praying, hallelujah, for ourselves. We start praying, hallelujah, for our finance. We start praying for our kids. We start praying for our personal things. And I want to remind someone, God doesn't want you to come with a grocery list to his prayers. God wants you to start off with thanksgiving and praise. God wants, you, God wants to remind you of what he did for you on the cross and you start thanking him. God wants to remind you that he wants to cleanse you and he's the only one that can help you with your eyes and your mouth and your mind. God wants to, to, to help you, hallelujah, to fill you with his holy presence. God wants to bless you, praise the Lord, in every way. And at the end, once you're at his presence and you're, you're reminded of a God who he is, the blessing, the names of all the names that you can think of, how he presented himself in your life, now you start praying for your personal things. Lord, look at this pain that I'm having in my body. Lord, look at this situation that I'm going with my kids. Lord, look at this situation with my finance. And I kid you not, when my wife texts me, I got emotional. I can only tell you what, what I experienced because I'm, I'm putting God first. I, 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 I'm not making this up to, to make it up to, to, to show off or, or to feel like I'm better than you because I'm not better than you. I, I just want to tell you that the prayers, when you pray and you put God first, God answers our prayers. Maybe you're praying for a family member. Whatever that look like, God can bless you. I want to encourage you today to use these outlines, to use these methods, to use. That's why I'm going out of my way and I'm printing these paperwork. I'm printing it that way you can have it when you're praying at your house. And you can look at this, 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 this model. Hallelujah. What, there you go. At this model of the tabernacle. It, it, again, it's not, the, it's not a law. It's a principle. It's a principle. If you put this first and you make it a prayer style, it becomes a habit. And you start saying, thank you, Jesus. I don't have the time. Well, make time. Go to sleep early. You know what time your pastor go to sleep? 8 30, 9 o'clock. I must I, I don't know if I because I'm getting older. I don't know. I don't know. But by 8 30, 9 o'clock, I'm knocked out. But guess what time I'm up? 4 35, my eyes are open like this. And can I be honest with you? Sometimes I don't want to get up. I'm like, I'm not getting up. This is, I can sleep 30 more minutes, 30 more minutes. And God's like, no, get up. Come talk to me. Come spend some time with me. I think God, what God is telling us on the second week of the year, this is the second Sunday of, of the year of 2024. God wants us to pray first. We want to give you some methods. We want to give you some tools how to pray. Next week, we're going to talk about the j -Bass prayer. It's going to be a good prayer. Get the book. Get the book. All these steps are in the book. I will never come out and say that this is my idea, that I came up with this method of prayer. No, 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 no. I'm going to give credit to whoever created because it's good. It, it's... I put it to practice. I'm like, this is working. Give the first month to Jesus. 
of the year. And you'll see what God is going to do in your life. Let's stand up. I'm going to ask my wife to sing one more song. But I want to pray for you. It's 1120. I went over five minutes. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the Moses prayer, Lord. We thank you for this principle. It's not a law. It's a principle. Lord, I pray that everyone in this room, if they're going through something in their lives, Lord Jesus, that you will bless them, Father God. Lord, let them not leave this place the same way they came in, Lord. Let them leave this place sensing your presence, sensing your love, sensing your joy. Lord, you are the strong tower and the righteous run to it. That's what the Bible says. And so today we're running to you. We're running to you, God. Whatever that looks like, because we know that your presence can make a change, can make a transformation, can make a difference in our lives, Lord Jesus. I just pray for anyone who's watching online, who is here currently, Father God, that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will help us for 2024. Whatever we're struggling with, God, you died on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, Jesus says for salvation we thank you God for healing we thank you God for transformation we thank you God for blessings because you continue to bless you have not changed you are the same yesterday today and tomorrow hallelujah Lord bless anyone in this room Father God that is struggling in an area let them come out of that routine and let there be a sense of intimate relationship with you let there be a sense Father God that prayer and fasting gets us closer to you this is the purpose of prayer and fasting to get closer to you Lord to get closer to you this year because we can't go into a new year with the same things we left in 2023. Lord, 2023, we've been through some tough times. We've been through some things in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we believe that we might still go through some things in our lives in 2024. But Lord, we need your help, Lord. We need your presence. We need your guidance. We need the filling of your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us up today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthrough, Father God. Let there be some breakthrough in this room right now, Lord Jesus. You have anointed us. You've given us the power, Father God, to pray over people, to bring healing, Father God. The altars are open if anyone wants prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh,
because you know that whatever you had in the beginning, whatever issues, God has removed it. He's cleansed you. So be, feel free this morning to worship the Lord. Amen. Once again, the altar, the prayer, it's, it's all open. It's ready. Praise it's God. It's anointed. Amen. It's ready Amen. for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. He's so good to us. His mercies are new every day. Every day. You may be seated. Praise God. Now we're going to worship with giving. Um, there are a couple of ways you can give at Metro Church. Uh, the first way is going to our website. If you're online, there's a link there. It's called MetroChurchJax.com. It's a secure giving platform. You don't have to worry about someone stealing your personal information. You can even do reoccurring. Uh, I got a couple of families right now. Actually, three people don't even come to this church, but all three of them have a reoccurring payment that comes every month to our church. Amen. God bless you for those three people who are constantly giving. Since we started this church, they're always giving to our church. Amen. Then you can give in person. Right in front of you, there's some envelopes. You can put in the envelope a check. If you're going to make a check, make it out to Metro Church Jacks. Um, or you can put uh, cash inside of that uh, envelope, and you can leave it right there. There is a bucket. We don't have someone with a bucket going around. We don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. But if you don't, if you do want to give something to the Lord, you're more than welcome to give Him something inside of that bucket. Um, you can do Zelle. Zelle, if you want to give through Zelle, is one of the ways that a lot that our church don't get charged a fee. Uh, which is 2.5 or 2.9. Uh, when you give through Zelle, we get the entire funds, and that's metrochurchjacks at gmail.com. And we also know that there are a lot of families that love to give through this app called Cash App. If you're going to give through Cash App, it's dollar sign Metro Church Jacks. Why do we create so many ways of giving through at Metro Church is that we don't want you to miss the opportunity to give to a solid ground, a work here in, this, in the city of Jacksonville, Florida, on the west side, a place called Oakleaf. I'm still believing. I'm not giving up. Hallelujah. I'm, I have a why we are here. Amen. I have a, come on, amen. Let's give it up for Jesus. Amen. There is a reason. There is a why, why we are here every Sunday. If you want to make this easier, there's also an app on your phone. If you're an Apple user or Google, just look for this app. It's called Church Center. 
I'm trying to find someone who can help me uh, with communication. In fact, I'm calling it the communication director. And this person is going to help me with the website, social media, and some other stuff that we will like. Your pastor currently has a whole bunch of roles. I'm the one doing the website. I'm the one doing, uh, some, at one time I was doing the camera with one uh, doing the slides with an iPad, and thank God he continues to send people to help us. We just, by the way, can we stand, can, can, can you stand up, Gloria? Uh, Gloria Fernandez is our accounting director. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. I, we just, come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Accounting director, and that basically means she's in charge of the money. Amen. That's what she means. She's a, I'm accountable to her. Uh, we've heard so many stories when it comes to finance and money in different churches, and we want to start a year with someone holding the leaders of this church accountable with the funds that come in through those doors. Amen. Uh, now we're going to pray. Let's stand up. I know my sister got up thinking we were going to pray to leave this place. We're leaving this place, but we're not leaving his presence. Amen. The presence of God continues with us as we go to a restaurant or we go to our homes or wherever we go at. We go to work. Um, the presence of God still is in us. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this group of people who are here and the group of people who will watch this later on YouTube or is watching right now. We thank you for everything from the worship, from the preaching, from the giving, everything we've done for your glory and your honor today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. Now, Lord, we're leaving not this, we're not leaving your presence, but you're leaving this place. Would you protect us from all harm and danger as we go to our destination? And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Take care. Say hello to someone you don't know. Their families when they start their own one day. Hey, I just want to make you proud for the times that I let you 